Good afternoon. It's been said before, welcome to the International Tennis Hall of Fame. Here in Newport, Rhode Island, in 1954, through the hard work of Candy and Jimmy Van Allen, the USTA sanctioned this incredibly beautiful facility as the National Lawn Tennis Hall of Fame. Starting in 1975, individuals from the worldwide tennis community became eligible for the induction into the International Tennis Hall of Fame. On these hallowed, hallowed grounds, today we will honor two special individuals who exemplify the greatest traditions of our sport. Integrity, perseverance, passion, athleticism, and sportsmanship. Their ac accomplishments both on and off the tennis court are the very reason why we are here today to pay tribute to them with the highest and most prestigious honor in the game of tennis. There are some very special guests seated here in the Bill Talbert Center Court who have come from near and far to help us salute our 2011 induction class and it's my pleasure to introduce them. First, the families and special friends of today's inductees. They've seen our inductees at their greatest and maybe the not so great. And they've supported and encouraged their tennis dreams and celebrated their accomplishments. They've come here today to be a part of this special celebration. And I'd like to ask the families and special friends of our inductees here on Center Court to please stand so we may recognize and thank you. Thank you. Now seated to my left are a group of individuals who their tireless work, leadership, and support of the International Tennis Hall of Fame and Museum it has grown into a marvelous institution. Their dedication to the preservation of the sport of tennis, both past and present, is unparalleled. They have grown and flourished through the years because of their commitment and guidance to the Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in thanking Mark Stenning, the Chief Executive Officer and the Executive Committee of the International Tennis Hall of Fame. Please stand. <laughs> Seated directly behind me is our official party. We're happy to have some Hall of Famers with us today. Our 1971 inductee Hall of Famer, please welcome Mr. Vic Satius. Nineteen ninety four Hall of Famer Bud Collins. Nineteen ninety six Hall of Famer Rosie Casales. Nineteen two Hall of Famer and Hall of Fame board member, please welcome Pam Shriver. 2004 Hall of Famer and inductee, Ms. Stephanie Graf. 2005 inductee and Hall of Fame Executive Committee member, Hall of Famer Butch Buckholz. 'Seated over here in the president's box, it is my pleasure to inter introduce Hall of Famer and tennis photographer, Mr. Russ Adams. <laughs> 2009 Hall of Famer and Vice Chairman of the Hall of Fame, Mr. Donald Dell. 2009. And last but by no means the least, last year's honoree, please welcome from Australia, Mr. Owen Davidson. And, and finally, we're also very happy to have here today Mr. Mark Young, the President and General Counsel of the ATP. Mark. Before we begin today's official induction ceremony, I'd like to take just a moment to honor a very special person who has shown tireless dedication and passion for this institution. He has served as a member of the board, executive committee, chair of the enshrining nominating committee and president of the International Tennis Hall of Fame and Museum, 
for the past 10 years. His selfless dedication to the promotion of the Hall of Fame and Museum is almost unprecedented. In recognition of all that he has done and will continue to do, it is my honor on behalf of the board and everybody associated with the International Tennis Hall of Fame to present Tony Traber as a life trustee of the International Tennis Hall of Fame. Tony could not be here today. Tony's very well, but I know Tony is watching every single word. He, I, you, Tony, what can I say other than thank you? And I'd like to introduce Tony's son and daughter, Mike and Brooke, and his granddaughter, Brittany Talbot, please. That's Mike and Brooke and Brittany Traber, excuse me. We will present his Life Trustee Award to Tony during the U.S. Open in September. For 50 years, the International Tennis Hall of Fame has worked hard to preserve and to promote the history of our great sport and continues to honor the legacies of the individuals who embodies its tradition. Today, we will begin by honoring two inductees with the singing of the United States of America's national anthem. As a special tribute to both Andre and Peachy, and as a bit of a surprise, I'd like to welcome the vocal star of the Andre Agassi College Preparatory Academy Choir, Mr. A.J. Green, a recent honors graduate. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Please be seated. And now it gives me great pleasure to pay tribute to our 2011 contributor inductee. As they say, vote peachy. Peachy has been the driving force behind the development of women's tennis. Fern Lee Peachy Kelmeyer. To introduce her today, we welcome Ms. Stacy Allister, the Chairman and CEO of the Women's Tennis Association. Please welcome Stacy. We're ready to go. I only want to do this once. Go. Go <laughs> All right. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and the Assistant Captain of the Vote Peachy campaign. We did it. Thank you. 
uh, to all the great Hall of Famers that are here on the stage uh, with us, to you, the tennis family, and to the soon-to-be Hall of Famer, Andre Agassi. Uh, what a joy. What a great pleasure for me to stand here today in this historic place and introduce my friend and mentor, Peachy Kelmar. Peachy? <laughs> yeah, let's give her applause. <laughs> Peach, you've always been in my Hall of Fame, and I'm so proud today that you're entering Tennis's Hall of Fame, an honor that is so well deserved. Peachy is the unsung hero of women's tennis, and thanks to today's induction, her story will now be known. So as I begin the story, I have to wind back the clock just a couple of years, just a couple, 1959, not many, <laughs> where 15-year-old Peachy was the youngest woman at the time to compete in the US Open. <clears throat> she was the first woman to play on a men's Division I collegiate team. And you didn't hear me wrong, I did say men's Division I college team. She went on to be a coach, and it was there she forever changed the future of athletics for women. In 1973, she, she sued to overturn the then widely accepted practice of universities refusing to grant scholarships for girls. The suit, known as the Kelmeyer case, was successful, and today, every woman who has a college scholarship should give thanks to Peachy. <clears throat> she has been singularly instrumental in building women's professional tennis into the leading global sport for women. From organizing the first women's event in Madison Square Gardens, to the unprecedented growth in prize money from 300,000 to today almost being 89 million, to the international expansion of the game when she first started her journey, where it was a primarily a US-based circuit, to now 53 tournaments in 33 countries featuring 2,000 athletes from 100 nations. And I know Peachy and I sometimes pinch ourselves when we see Women's Tennis Association written in Chinese. To think that the WTA would have an office in Beijing is really a dream come true. And along with that dream, I think Peachy's crowning moment of achievement was when women won equal prize money at Roland Garros and Wimbledon in 2007 a campaign that Peachy was at the center of for more, to, more than 30 years. She started that journey and she gave the athletes at the time this pin, a tennis ball with the equal prize money. And when we got it, she recommissioned it and gave it to everyone who had served and achieved that goal together. So much about Peachy, a few more uh, uh, Interesting facts, she's the WTA's first employee and we opened our doors nearly 40 years ago. She's still coming to the office, keeping me on my toes, sharing her wisdom and experience in the uh, ever so diplomatic, uh, peachy kind of way. And anyone who's worked with Peachy, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm the ninth CEO to work under Peachy. She has always been our boss. And on behalf of myself, Bart McGuire, who's here, and Worcester and Larry Scott, former CEOs, and the CEOs who are here and are with us in spirit, we have been proud to serve with you, Peachy. She has been the glue of women's tennis, holding the WTA together 
as CEOs and players have come and gone, a constant force for 38 years, propelling women's tennis to unprecedented heights and never letting us forget that our past is our future. And I know today's honor means so much to her because the past is critically important and the symbolism of the International Tennis Hall of Fame is everything she wants the WTA to be. She is selfless. She is humble. It's never been about Peachy. It's, she's given her entire life to this sport, all for the love of the game. In our WTA world, you just say the name Peachy. She brings a smile to everyone's face. I was speaking to Ann Worcester a few nights ago, and she said, if there was a popularity contest in tennis, there wouldn't be a contest, because Peachy would win it hands down. Peach, you always make me feel great. You uplift everyone around you. And I can assure you, every tournament, every player, every coworker, every board member who has shared your journey is smiling today. You deserve this great honor, and it's such a privilege for me to introduce you. Thank you for inviting me to be your doubles partner today. Your turn to serve and close out this Hall of Fame match. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. We have a new tagline at the WTA, and it's strong is beautiful, and if Stacy doesn't fit that, I don't know who does. She's short, but she's strong. <laughs> um, Stacy made me sound like the perfect peach, and we know that is not true. But what is true today is that I'm the happiest peach in Newport. <laughs> to the tennis fans here, to the Hall of Fame Board of Directors, to this elite group of Hall of Famers, to my family, and to my friends. For me, up here today, it just doesn't get any better than this. Thank you. Now look, um, I know I'm not the main attraction today. <laughs> but I just want you to know, Andre, that I'll be the opening act for you anytime, <laughs> any place, anywhere. I always promised myself that if I had a moment on center court, I would thank the two women who really were responsible for laying the foundation of the tour and the WTA. And those two women are the late Gladys Heldman and Billie Jean King. In 1970, Gladys founded the tour along with the original nine players led by Billie Jean King and Hall of Famer Rosie Casale. These nine players signed a $1 contract and a handshake, and we had a woman's tour. In 1973, Billie Jean founded the WTA at Wimbledon, along with 60 other women players. They had no contracts, but they had a lot of handshakes. And the good news for me was, I had a job. <laughs> Over these years, my greatest joy has been the privilege of working with the players. But just as satisfying for me has been working with some of the brightest and most talented tournament directors, sponsors, administrators, WTA board members, colleagues, and CEOs in our sport. I'm so pleased that many of them have come here this weekend to join in this celebration. 
So today, I have many friends to thank. But there is one woman who stood by me in good times and the not so good times. And she became the most powerful woman in tennis. She's my lifesaver, Stephanie Tollison. <laughs> Believe me, in this sport, you need friends. So it isn't always what you know, but a good bit of the time is who you know. And it was also who I know that made it possible for me to get up here today. My former boss, Larry Scott, now the Pac-10 commissioner, spearheaded my Hall of Fame nomination, along with Jane Brown Grimes, former president of the USTA, and Billy Ching King, my hero and everyone's champion. The next step after you get nominated, you have to get on the ballot, and then you have to get the votes. So in steps the strong and beautiful Stacy, and does what she does best and starts to strategize. And she also starts to rally support. She, there was not any stone that she didn't leave unturned, and many people thought that maybe she was the one running for the Hall of Fame. So as the votes came in, my dream came true. So I will never forget the special efforts made by Larry and Stacy, And they believed in me sometimes when I didn't believe in myself. So thank you guys. But I don't, I don't really stand up here alone. I feel I represent a generation of women who have done their best in this sport and worked hard. And we have a common bond and a common purpose to give back each and every day so that this sport will be better tomorrow than it is today. In life, we pick our friends, but not our family. So we have to wish for a little luck, and I've been a very lucky person. My parents planted our roots in Charleston, West Virginia, and that will always be my home. My brother, Freddie, inherited the all-round athletic ability, outgoing personality, and a zest for life. My sister Kay inherited the good looks, the brains, and the love of animals. As for me, I was not quite so lucky. I inherited my grandmother's name, Fern Lee, and I also inherited a club foot. Now, it was pretty easy to get rid of Fern Lee. That was easy, but it's not easy to get rid of a club foot but it taught me a very important lesson in life. You don't have to be 100% to give 100%. Many of my family members are here today, and I just want to thank them so much and tell them I'm every bit of, as proud of them as they are of me. So who would have thought that those handshakes that launched the tour and the WTA would result in so many happy memories and friendships and make tennis the number one professional sport in the world for women? So for me, my life is very simple. I love my family, my friends, and I love women's tennis. Thank you. Right there. Stay right there. Hold on one second. So on behalf of the Board of Directors, Fern Lee Peachy Kelmeyer, for, for this day forward, it will be Peachy Kelmeyer Hall of Famer. Sam's going to put your blazer on. Okay. Do you want to have an honor? Do you want to put it on for like 10 seconds? Yeah. Let me put that to the kid. Ah. Could you walk out in front? Yeah, Let's walk out in front. Yeah. We are honored today to have with us three time Grammy Award winner. Mr. Keb Mo to perform America the Beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Keb Mo. 
Thank you. Mr. Keb Mo. Our 2011 recent player inductee holds eight Grand Slam titles, an Olympic gold medal, career Grand Slam, and a Davis Cup champion. He is a champion of, champion of philanthropy and making this world a better place. Andre Agassi. To, to introduce Andre today, we are very pleased to have with us, who is kind of emblematic of the Andre Agassi College Preparatory Academy, the valedictorian of the first class, graduating class in 2009, a student at Con Concordia University. Please welcome Ms. Simone Ruffin. about my hometown hero. <laughs> my hometown hero was an amazing tennis prodigy. He helped change the game from being known as a country club sport and revolutionized it to become one that the average person can learn and enjoy. What is it that motivates a man to dig deep and become the best in the world at his passion, experience great success, and then return to his community providing resources and inspiration beyond anyone's wildest expectation? My hometown hero had fans from around the world on the edges of their seat anticipating his every move, striking fear in the hearts of many an opponent, sending the ball in their direction at lightning speed. He made them run. <laughs> Expending their energy, destroying their game, and coming back with a power play, totally in control of the game. He wasn't always perfect, and that's okay. There was that mullet wig thing. <laughs> <laughs> but he showed us that even in the face of adversity, we can become our very best. Thanks. All right now, my hometown hero, he was larger than life and still made time to give back. A man whose first interview was before I was even born used his success in tennis as a platform to change the lives of my generation. To give some justice to such a life and such a career is a tall order, but I'll take a swing at it. <laughs> My community has had the rare fortune to have been touched with the love, compassion, and generosity of one man who is a game changer, proving that just one individual with a heart for others can make a true and widespread and lasting difference. He was a rare individual who saw the potential for change and created it where others saw hopelessness. He has transformed the way that we see our lives and the possibilities they hold. I live in this little town called Las Vegas, Nevada. 
Some call it fabulous. Maybe you've heard of it. It's a place of fun, excitement, and escape. A place where you can do anything or be anybody. But it's also a place where education and personal development tend to be a last consideration. Some even say that it's no place for children. People may forget that there is a community there. There's a community of youth with the same unlimited potential of children from around the globe. I personally am grateful that one man had the vision to reach back and foster that potential. In a time and place where few held out hope for the future of young Nevadans, one man's vision provided an inroad to success. But hey, we've all heard that it takes a village to raise a child. Well, our village has been served by my hometown heroes, foundation that supports a child haven, a children's medical facility, a boys and girls club, and a school that is changing education in Las Vegas. My hometown hero gave back in a way that equipped people to achieve more. He gave something more than just money or even simply material things. He provided us with the tools to build our own lives. From this, we were empowered to be anything, to become infinite. Let me be honest, without his example, I may have possibly sometimes neglected to give back. But because of this great man, I have had the pleasure of knowing since elementary school, one of the greatest tennis players of all time, but I dare say one of the greatest men of all time. Because of him, I will never forget to look back and lift up others. As a student who has directly benefited from the actions of one of the world's most generous athletes, I am without words for the gratitude that I feel. I mean, like, where do you begin when one man has had such a profound impact on one's education, one's life, one's community? Um, people who have never met him will stand under the umbrella of his generosity. My hometown hero has led the charge when it comes to giving back. He has kept his eye on the ball on and off the court and is truly walking the walk. He has stunned the world with his love, with his love for others and is constantly used as an example of what we can do if we have just a little bit of what he has. Basically, he's shown us all that this is how you give back to your community. This is how you care for others. This is how you make a difference that will outlive us all. Our hometown hero, Spark of Love, has ignited a flame that has become a firestorm. One of our great-grandchildren will be leading the Alternative Fuels Initiative because of the opportunities that he is providing right now. My children will be the children of a clinical psychiatrist, and we'll use that to do, to, as a springboard to do just a little bit more than I did. My hometown hero will not only be remembered, but he will be honored through the actions of those who have been empowered to do so much, all because of a humble, generous man who played tennis. I am the voice of so many children. <laughs> I stand here and I am the voice of so many children whose lives have been changed by the generosity of one. The beneficiaries are everywhere. I mean, who could have possibly predicted that his first swing of the racket would become something that has transcended tennis and has made such a huge difference. From growing from remedial math to advanced math to the point where I was one of the top people in my class because of a great teacher who cared. Thank you, Ms. Manchin. <laughs> my very first internship at the Brain Institute. Thank you, Dr. Vernick. Meeting awesome mentors who are movers and shakers of our community. Thank you, Mr. Breitling. And for that word, we use all too often, opportunity. I went to Paris, and now I'm standing here at the Tennis Hall of Fame. <laughs> because you have brought these types of people to my life, I have done all these things. And because of your love, I will never, ever be the same. To this hometown hero, I say that you have changed my life. And because of you, so many doors have been opened for me and my classmates. The future Dr. Simone Ruffin, thank you. You are not only an amazing athlete, but you're an amazing person who I will always hold up as an example. From the students of Las Vegas, all the people whose lives you've changed, and from the generations after us, we love you. 
and we will continue to honor your legacy. Okay, so maybe you guys are wondering, um, who is this hometown hero? <laughs> well, he's the son of Mike and Betty. He shares both the footprints and initials of the great Arthur Ashe. He's the husband of fellow tennis legend, Steffi Graf. Yes. <laughs> he's an inspiration of communities worldwide, tennis master, world renowned on and off the court, one of the best tennis players in the history of the game. What? One of the best role models in Las Vegas, forever immortalized here and within the lives of people worldwide. I give you our hometown hero, Mr. Andre Agassi. <laughs> Thank you, Simone. <laughs> Something tells me you're going to be unstoppable in life. <laughs> I've, uh, I've stood at this podium twice before. Once was to introduce my beautiful wife, Stephanie Graff. I was so much more comfortable uh, that day because <laughs> I felt the, the recipient to, uh, to be far more worthy. The second time was in my father's imagination. In his, in his mind's eye, from the day I was born, my father, Mike, saw this day in my future and described it to me many times. So my feeling of deja vu right now almost rivals my feeling of gratitude, almost. You know, not long ago I was uh, giving a talk in my hometown in Las Vegas and after I spoke there was this uh, answer and question period. The first hand up, first questions out of the box, was a man in the front row. You could see in this man's face that he was really struggling with something. He took the microphone, stood up, and asked, how do you know when to stop telling your kids what to do? The questioner was my father. I was cut off guard that night. I didn't know what to say. I, I don't remember what I did say. But the answers come to me now so, so clearly. Dad, when I was five, you told me to win Wimbledon. When I was seven, you told me to win all the four Grand Slams. And more times than I can remember, you told me to get into the Hall of Fame. And when I was 29, I don't know if you remember this, you told me to marry Steffi Graf. <laughs> Best order you ever gave me. So, Dad, please... Don't ever stop telling me what to do. <laughs> if we're 
If we're lucky in life, we get a handful of moments when we don't have to wonder if we made a parent proud. We don't have to ask them, we just, we just know. I wanna thank Tennis for giving me one of those moments today. It's one of the many things in which I need to thank this sport. I look at Simone and the thousands of young people she represents at Agassiz Prep, and I say under my breath, thank you, Tennis. I look at my wife and my children, <laughs> who I live for, and I say thank you, Tennis. I look to the future, my efforts to build high-performing charter schools in inner cities across the U.S., schools that will impact tens of thousands of Simones. And I say thank you, Tennis, for making that possible. I fell in love with tennis far too late in my life, but the reason that I have everything that I hold dear is because of how much tennis has loved me back. I'm thrilled, humbled, quite terrified, to be honest, to stand in front of you right now. I felt vulnerable on a tennis court many times, but not quite like today. I've grown up in front of you, You've seen my highs, my lows. We've laughed together, cried together. But what is so clear to me standing here today is that you have given me compassion, understanding, love, more than I expected, many times more than I deserve. Tennis has not only given me much, and it's taught me much. It's no accident that tennis uses the language of life, service, advantage, break, fault, love. The lessons of tennis are the lessons of maturity. In tennis, you prepare and you prepare, and then one day your preparation seems futile. Nothing's working, and the other guy's got your number cold. So you improvise. In tennis, you learn what I do instantly affects what you do and vice versa. Tennis makes you perceptive, proactive, reactive all at the same time. Tennis teaches you the subtlety of human interaction, the curse and blessing of cause and effect. After you play tennis for a living, you never forget that we are all connected. And there's nothing quite like a tie break that teaches you the concept of high risk, high reward. Tennis teaches you there's no such thing as perfect. You want to be perfect. You hope to be perfect. Then you're out there and you're far less than perfect. And you realize, I don't really have to be perfect today. I just have to be better than one person. It's true. <laughs> All you club players, you remember that, okay? <laughs> Tennis is a lonely sport, probably the most lonely. You're out there with no team, no coach, and no place to hide. That's why tennis players not only talk to themselves, but answer. And yet all that loneliness eventually teaches you to stand alone. The high standards that tennis imposes on us, the self-reliance it demands of us, that's the reason why tennis has produced so many of life's great game changers. One of the landmarks of our sport, our National Tennis Center in New York, is home to the Arthur Ashe Stadium. What courage Arthur showed how fair he was while being treated so unfairly. Once Arthur grabbed hold of a truth, he was unwilling 
not capable of letting go. Tennis gave us that man. He was and is a treasure, not just for America, but for the whole world, for those who have yet to be born. The Tennis Center itself is a Billie Jean King National Tennis Center, named after one of my personal heroes. Think of the seismic transformation Billie caused in society. Our wives, daughters, mothers have more than a hope for equality. They have a mandated claim on it because of Billie. She did so much more than just inspire women. She changed the way men and women think about men and women, the way we all think about equality. She woke us up. Tennis gave us Billy. And Tennis Today has given me the chance to say thank you, Billy. Tennis gave me all my personal teachers that I owe a debt I can never repay. They lifted me up and carried me across many finish lines, sometimes literally. My dad, Mike, and my mom, Betty. My big brother, Phil. My friend, protector, and trainer, Gil Reyes. <laughs> my coaches, Nick Boliteri, Darren Cahill, <laughs> Brad Gilbert, you th and the person who means more to me than words can express, the woman who still takes my breath away every day, Stephanie Graff. Each one of them deserves a separate Hall of Fame speech. But of course, there isn't time. So I've written a letter to each one of them, intimate letters, love letters. But they're not private. I want the world to know how I feel. So I'm putting them on my foundation's website, where I hope they'll serve as a permanent public tribute to those who made this day a reality. They're the ones who made possible the highlights. They're the reasons I'm blessed with magical memories that help me sleep, sometimes keep me awake. Because of my father, I have the memory of the 92 Wimbledon, the 96 Olympics, and some thrilling Davis Cups. Because of Gil, I have the memory of the 99 French Open, his ear to ear smile in the fifth set when we both thought my tank was empty, but there's a few drops of fuel left. Because of Stephanie and my children, Jaden and Jazz, there was that day of my retirement in 2006 when I got to walk away from the sport on my own terms. They were there for me that day, ready to embrace the future, whatever that might be. These are my people, and these memories are seared in my mind forever. One of the most influential people in my life I met only one time. It was the most vulnerable time, a time that I needed direction and inspiration. And just then, there I was, shaking hands with Nelson Mandela. He took my, no. He took my hand, complimented my game, and in the same breath, told me the reason why we have been put here on Earth. I can still close my eyes and hear his words of wisdom from that evening. He said, we must be careful in our decisions, careful in our words, and we must be careful in our relationships. Andre, we must live our life carefully. Once you hear those words from Nelson Mandela, you can never unhear them. I didn't always live carefully. I didn't always pay tennis the respect it deserved. I thought it was my career 
that was creating my angst, that tennis was the cause of my internal tension and disconnect. I didn't know myself, and I didn't recognize that my troubles were of my own making, and that I, and only I, could solve them. Only after being broken, another tennis term, did I realize I wasn't being careful. But you know, Rock Bottom's an interesting place. I moved in and spent some time there. It's actually not a bad place. It's a place where you get to ask, who do I want to be? Am I ready to take ownership of my life? For me, ownership meant growing up, focusing every day on being just one day better. Ownership meant not only embracing tennis, but celebrating it. Ownership meant going back to the challenger circuit, feeling honored to be my own ball boy, feeling privileged to flip my own scorecard. Ownership meant feeling grateful for being and having the chance to start over. Climbing out of that hole that I had dug for myself, that's when I started choosing to believe that each of us have a plan for our life, a purpose to fulfill, body of work to create, a reason to be. I committed to taking care of myself and taking care of my tennis. Going from a ranking of 141 in the world back to number one was not an accomplishment. It was the reflection of an accomplishment. It was the symptom of good choices. It was the result of being careful. The highlights I experienced taught me what is possible. The hard times reinforced the consequences of me not being true to my character, of not living up to my expectations. These things have coalesced inside of me into a kind of code, a personal mission statement. I believe we have a responsibility to each other, a responsibility to create more than we consume, a responsibility to build things that will outlast us, a responsibility to find our own limits and push through them. Even when life's challenges weigh us down, make us unrecognizable to ourselves, we can always begin again. There's always time to thrive. It's not too late to be inspired. It's not too late to change. It's not too late. This honor today leaves me deeply humbled but it also makes me think of others who don't get their due. Teachers, nurses, caregivers, struggling parents, all the people who do the right thing, who win their own private grand slams. They know already what took me decades to figure out, that we are here to do good quietly, to shine in secret, to give when there's no crowd applauding, to give of ourselves to someone who can offer us nothing. Tennis gave me the chance to meet so many of these people, to travel the world and visit places where the human spirit shines brightest because life is darkest. Tennis taught me that the needs of this world are great, but they are no match, nor will they ever be a match for the human spirit. So thank you, Tennis, for my life. Thank you, Tennis, for my wife. And thank you, Tennis, for enabling me to find my life's work. In closing, to my son, Jaden, my daughter, Jazz, and every young person listening to my voice, the world that we're leaving you it's not the world we wish for you. You need to make that world 
to go places we've never been, to succeed in ways we've never dreamed. Mandela said to me, there is difficulty in all human journeys, but there is nobility in just being a journeyer. From him I learned every journey is epic. Every journey is important. Every journey begins today. And at the beginning of my journey, my friend Gil said to me, Andre, you have dreams and I have strong shoulders. So stand on my shoulders and reach. To my children, to all of our children, stand on our shoulders, reach higher than we could, reach for your dreams. Because today standing here, receiving this honor, I am living proof that no dream, no journey is impossible. Thank you. Yes, Andre, you're in. <laughs> On behalf of everyone here watching and the board of directors of the International Tennis Hall of Fame, from this day forward, it is Hall of Famer Andre Agassi. Over the uh, past year and the coming two years, we've been giving Hall of Famers a gold ring. I'm a little uncomfortable giving this one to Stephanie Graff, and I thought Andre Agassi would do so today. <laughs> Stephanie, would you please join us up here? In keeping with tradition, I would now ask the newest members of the International Tennis Hall of Fame who have just achieved the highest honor and recognition in the sport of tennis to take a walk around Bill Talbert Center Court. Ladies and gentlemen, the inductees of the 2011 class of the International Tennis Hall of Fame, Peachy Kalmeyer and Andre Agassi.